Good morning, family. Uh, I love you guys so much, and thank you, Pastor Son. You are my favorite today. I am trying to get my phone to work. You know, when you're an old lady, sometimes you just can't work stuff. Okay. Um, I'm so excited to be here. Could I just take one second to just say, happy Black History Month. I don't think that we acknowledge that much from the pulpit, and we're family, and I love you no matter what shade of awesome you are, um, and I just love you guys so much, so happy Black History Month, and because Wes has given me 30 minutes to squash in eight years of study, let's get started. Are you ready? Grab those pins. Let me hear them click. I've always wanted to do that. That sounds so cool, and let's start with our first verse. Colossians 3.14, this is our theme today. Beyond all these things, put on and wrap yourselves in love. And that word in Greek is agape, which is the perfect bond of unity. Put on and wrap yourselves in love. I wanted to call this don't leave home naked. But I'm thinking maybe a little bit more appropriate title is the one we've got today. You'll be glad you did when you dress every morning in agape. As a missionary kid, I don't know if you know that I grew up on, in South America. My parents are missionaries. And at the age of 12, I got to start in ministry. 12 years old. I had my own Sunday school class. It was the toddlers. And we met in a classroom the size of a walk-in closet on the side of the baptistry. Fast forward to college, Southeastern. On the weekends, I did kids' church and I did midweek uh, service with the girls, like a girls Bible club. As a young wife and mom, church four times a week. Sunday school, you know, church, Wednesday night and Sunday night, and I taught Sunday school to kids and adults, college and career, the choir, special solos, uh, prayer and altar ministry, and the pinnacle of all ministries for a woman, the women's ministry president. Seven years on the field, 17 in that little church in Plant City, and I did it all wrong. I did it all wrong. And for all those years of work and stress and labor, and when I stand before God's throne and he judges our works by fire, all of that's going to go whoosh. And I'd like to think there may be a couple gold nuggets at the bottom of the pile, but that's why I'm here today. I want you to learn from my mistake of all those years. You're young. <laughs> you have a lot of years ahead of you, and I want you to get it right. What was wrong? I did it from a place of my skills and my creativity and my way and my agenda and my plan and my decorations and my credit and my applause. And I would parade those toddlers out, and every Sunday on, in Paraguay after, the, after Sunday school, they would come out, and each class would sit together, the little ones all the way up to the adults, and everybody would stand up and recite their Bible verse. And my toddlers would stand up, and they're the cutest, and they're the tiniest, and they would get the awes and the applause, and that was my big moment. That was my motivation. That's why I did that. 17 years ago, as those... For those 17 years when we went to church in Plant City, it was my Sunday to sing a song, the, or the offertory. That was a big deal. And I took my guitar, and I'd practiced all week, and it was time for my solo. I put my guitar on the front pew. Y'all know what a pew is? It has nothing to do with aromatherapy. So I put it on the front row facing this way. So that it, the neck was sticking up and all the tuners were facing the back or the, toward the congregation. And I waited till it was my turn to sing and it looked safe enough. This is an antique. That's from Paraguay. And I kept an eye on it and it was fine until one of the bus ministry boys came in a little bit late. late. An overweight boy, unkempt from a less than affluent community. And he sat right behind it on the second row. And I'm like, oh. I got my eye on you because I know boys and buttons and boys and knobs. And in fact, I know men and buttons. You find them irresistible. And I was watching him like a hawk, ready to go Psst, at a moment's notice. And I got up to sing in front of the congregation, my big moment. And I strummed that first chord, and it sounded horrible. And I was mortified. I was embarrassed. I was humiliated. I knew that at some point when I wasn't watching, 
he, it was irresistible, and he turned one of those tuners, and I was humiliated. And what was in my heart came out in that moment of trying to redeem myself and my pride to let them know it wasn't my fault. I know how to tune a guitar. And I said, I guess that's what you get when you leave your guitar in front of one of the van kids. And his face crumpled. And I don't remember, did I tune the guitar and try to move on? Did I just sing with the piano? I don't remember. But when that solo, that amazing song is laid at the feet of Jesus on the day when our works are judged, it's going to go like flash paper. And I made some kind of apology to him after church, but our words are things. <laughs> the power of life and death is in the tongue, and I will never know the damage that I did to his little heart. About 12 years ago, I was sitting in the parking lot of a Hillsborough County public school, and I was getting ready to go in and do an assembly, back-to-back -back assemblies, where the entire student body would come into a room just like this, and they would sit on the floor, cold floor, and hear me talk about puppetry. And I said, normally, my typical prayer was, oh, God, help them to behave, help the teachers to be alert and pay attention and help me out. Please help the sound equipment to work. Me, 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 and thank you for the paycheck they're going to give me because it's nice, and me, me, and me, me, me. But this time... And I would say, I don't know where it came from, but I know where it came from. This thought, this idea just came into my heart and spirit. And for some reason that day, I said, Father, I don't know these kids. I don't, I don't love them. I don't, they're strangers, but you love them. Would you love them through me today? I'm like, that was an interesting prayer. And so I just prayed that, and I, I, it was sincere. And let me tell you, I felt it. They felt it. We had this connection that was incredible. The entire assembly, they were just connected to me. It was this sweetness and this beauty, this patience that I'd never had before. It was the best assembly I'd ever had. And I said, wow, I'm going to do that before every assembly. You know what? I'm going to do that before I minister anyway. You know what? I'm going to do that before I speak anyway. You know what? I'm going to do that before I encounter another human breathing uh, being every morning. And it changed my life. It's the secret. It's getting up every morning and wrapping myself in that agape. It's now my lifelong study, and it's my legacy. And every person that will listen to me, that's my heart and my message. Do it right from the start. It's the Father's heart. Without it, let's see, look at 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak with human eloquence, I'm an amazing communicator, an angelic ecstasy, but I do not love, underline that on your notes, but I don't love, I am nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. I am just an annoying sound. <laughs> if I speak God's word with power, come on, God, and I reveal all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, I'm just an incredible minister. What about, what about if I have faith that says mountain jump and it jumps? I'm an amazing faith-filled believer. Come on, that's got to count, right, God? But I don't love, underline that, I'm nothing. What about if I give everything I own to the poor? I empty my fridge and give it to the Bay Chapel Food Pantry. And I even, listen, I go to the stake to be burned as a martyr for my faith. But I don't love. I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe and what I do, I am bankrupt without love. So when I say love, I am talking about the Greek word agape, not just an emotional feeling, not a gushy feeling. What is agape? I'm so glad you asked. Agape is supernatural. Supernatural. Other than a brand new baby that you hold in your arms and you're like, this feeling just comes from inside of you. Agape is not, nat it's not natural or normal for you to love another human being. It's not normal for you to love people in this room. It's certainly not normal or natural for you to love strangers. That whole love your neighbor thing, ugh, I just feel guilty that I don't feel that love for people. Guess what? No guilt allowed. Because agape is not emotion-based. It's choice and obedience-based. 
Y'all better click your pins over that one. It is choice and obedience place. And guess what? You are not the source of agape because it's supernatural. You're not the origin or the source. You just get to be the delivery person. You get to pass the love note. Let's just start simple. Let your face be the messenger. How many of you know you will stick out and look a little crazy if you walk down the aisles at Walmart smiling and making eye contact with people? You just say, good morning. I love your shirt. Oh, my word, your hair looks awesome. Where did you get those shoes? You know, whatever your thing is, comment on their cart, anything in there. But just make contact with another human being. Be the delivery person for supernatural love. Just use light, words that are life-giving and positive, and you will be a weirdo. <laughs> because that is not normal or natural in our culture. How cool is this? Any gesture, no matter how small, if done in agape, counts and you will be rewarded for. You don't believe me? Read this right here. Matthew 10, 42. Whoever gives to one of these little ones, these people that are humble in rank or influence, even a cup of cold water to drink because he's, oh, underline this, my disciple. Truly, I say to you, he will not lose his reward, underline reward, I want you to have a reward. I want what, everything that you do to count in eternity. You will be rewarded by doing the smallest thing. If you do it, what does it say? As my disciple. What does that mean? Look at John 13, 35. By this will everyone know that you are my disciples. If you have love one for another. Unselfish concern one for another. Underline that love right there. In fact, just underline that whole verse. That's how you're supposed to be known. This is your reputation. This is your identity. This should be on a bumper plate on the back of your car. I am a disciple, and you're going to know that because I'm letting you go first in line. Oh, come on, somebody. So it's supernatural. <laughs> Our love is limited, and it's conditional. But agape is supernatural, and it is my highly technical visual aids, it is unconditional. Oh, and you can sit here and smile and go, oh, my love's unconditional. Let's see. Wes taught us last week that there's two kinds of love. There is contract love. And contract love says, well, I will if you will. And if it's in my best interest, but if you hurt my feelings, peace out. Covenant agape says, I will love you. It's a daily choice because he loves me, because I have received his love and it fills me to overflowing and it splashes out on everybody around me. First Thessalonians 3.12 says, and may the Lord cause you to increase and excel and overflow in love for one another and for all people, just as we did also for you. So it's supernatural, unconditional, and you're going to love this one. It is selfless. Oh, another word for selfless is humble. And humility is you're completely dead to yourself. Oh, my way, my agenda, my plan, my timing, my attention, my stuff, my toys, my territory, my pride, my reputation, my fears, my doubts. It's dead to yourself and it's putting others ahead of yourself and having a servant's heart. It's that after you attitude. Tell me about your day. It's learning to say and mean it. I'm so happy for you. What? You sit in the back. You got a new boat? Awesome. You got a new diamond? Fabulous. You're going on a river cruise in Europe? Oh, give me a minute. Yay. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. You want to see that perfected and modeled? Write this in, your, in the margin as your homework. Don't look it up now. We don't have time. Philippians 2. This is going to make your head hurt. It's so awesome. Philippians 2, 1 to 11. I dare you to read that and not be completely moved. But look at this quote. Everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. And this is my favorite line. I just want to uh, eat this line up. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. The subject of your love in action don't have to agree. You don't even have to like the other person. It's still your duty. It's still your calling because it's supernatural. It's unconditional. It's selfless. And oh, look out. What's going on, mama? It is bold. 
Are you willing to ask every morning, God, what does your love require of me today? Are you willing to be alert to every opportunity and see people as he sees them and say, put me in, tap me, I'll touch them. Put me in the game, coach. What's stopping you? Courage is an inner resolution to go forward despite obstacles. Cowardice is submissive surrender to circumstances. Circumstances. Courage, I love this line, courage breeds creativity. You're going to have creativity when you reach out to people. Cowardice represses fears and is mastered by it. Cowardice asks the question, oh, is it safe? Expediency asks the question, is it politic? which means wise and prudent. Vanity asks the question, oh, is it popular? But conscience, the Holy Spirit, asks the question, is it right? And there comes a time when we must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular, nor comfortable, nor easy, but one must take it because it is right. Agape is supernatural, unconditional, selfless, bold, and guess what? It's vulnerable. I can promise you four things. If you walk in agape, you are going to get rejected. And it stings. But I've been walking this for years now. And let me tell you, it is honestly few and far between. Because the world is starving for what you have. They yearn for that love that you have to offer them. So it's going to happen. It's going to be very rare. It's worth it. And jot this down in the margin, too, because it's a surprise. Don't look it up now, but you're going to go, what? Woohoo! Luke 6, 22. The tougher the rejection, the bigger your reward's going to be in heaven. So bring it on Oscar night in heaven. You are going to be well rewarded. Can I give you an example, a story of crazy walked out ex- uh, agape? It's just not to give credit to me or any kind of, uh, you know, light on me, but just to show you where I've come from that day. Only by the supernatural love of God flowing through me can I tell you a day in the life of somebody walking out crazy agape. It takes place on the mission field called Publix, which I believe is Greek for Publix. And... I started the day like I do every morning. God loved through me supernaturally, unconditionally, selflessly, boldly, and vulnerably. And in fact, when I got in my car and I was sitting in the parking lot at Publix, I'm like, all right, God, we're going in there together. Let's get them. Find me some people that need you and need to be reminded of your love. I know they're in there, Jesus. Let's find them. I'm your girl. Put me in, coach. And I left everything that was me in the car. My fears, my anxieties, my what ifs, my uh, left it in the car and I walked in with some boldness. There should have been slow mo and wind blowing in my hair, <laughs> that cape, because I was ready to love some strangers. And my first encounter were these two ladies, a mother and daughter, who were um, in the soup aisle and they had a stack full of coupons and they were so proud of their coupons. So that was my little creative point of contact. Oh my goodness, I forget to coupon. Please don't tell my grandmother that I am not a couponer. She'd be so ashamed. They were so proud to show me all the stuff they got for free. And we talked, and I turned to go, and I said, do either of you happen to need any prayer today? The mama said, you know what? I have not been sleeping, and I have this stomach pain, and she was about yay tall. And I grabbed her, and in Spanish, because they were the Spanish ladies, ay, señor, bendiga esa señora de los sueños ricos esta noche, sana la, su, su estómago. And I just prayed over her and said, oh, God loves you so much, and kissed her on the head. Yeah. That's not natural. So (laughs) I just kept going through Publix, and I'm like, yes, that was cool. Thanks, coach, for putting me in. Score. And we walked out, we, me and Jesus, we walked around the, the aisle, and my next encounter was this tiny, frail little lady, and she was in one of those motorized little doohickeys, those scooters, and she had a Publix employee with her, a young man who was helping her get stuff, and I said, 
well, my goodness, you must be a princess. You've got your chariot and you've got your own personal assistant. You rock. What's your name? And I forgot what it was, but she was so sweet. And I said, how are you doing today, Miss So-and-so? And she said, well, honey, I'm old. I'm kind of achy. I said, are you okay if I pray with you? Well, of course. And I said, are you okay if I pray with her? Well, uh, okay, sure. So I just stood behind her and I put my hands on her shoulder and I put my head next to her head and I just said thank you God for Miss Smithsman and I know that you love her so much you sent this crazy lady here to just pray for her remind her how much you love her let your peace just flow down over her and the young man goes amen and so I'm like score thanks coach kept going and then I walked around the aisle and went past the medicine aisle because there in the medicine aisle was a man about my age and he had his right arm in a sling and his left leg in a brace from thigh to ankle and I'm like okay big time this is the big time here's what we're gonna do God I'm just gonna toss a little seed see what kind of ground it lands on if he's weird um or if he thinks I'm weird I'll just keep walking and we'll go next all right so I walked down the aisle. There was a lady with a cart and a stock boy. I saw his name Ted said Michael. Michael was stocking things, and this lady was looking at vitamins. I thought, well, maybe that's his wife. And I said, well, my goodness, I'm so sorry. You have boo-boos. And he laughed. And I went, all right, that seed fell on fertile ground. Let's just push it a little farther. What on earth happened to you? And he said, can you believe it? I had surgery on my, on my shoulder yesterday, my rotator cuff, and my knee, and, da, 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 and I forgot what he said because I was so excited, and, but something happened with his knee, and he's like, and both at the same time, and now I can't work, and I said, oh my goodness, and I pulled my cart next to, on his side of the aisle, and I said, what's your name? Cliff. Cliff, I don't want to make you uncomfortable, but would you be okay if I prayed for you? I would love that. Thank you so much. And vitamin ladies over there going and stock boys going and I didn't care and I said all right Cliff let's pray for that shoulder so I said can I put my hand right there sure and I just prayed that God would just touch his shoulder and that the pain would be gone he said it was about a three and when we finished praying I'm like Cliff how's that pain vitamin ladies going and he said it's gone but my knee is killing me and I said Cliff the pain's gone in your shoulder yeah, but my, I said, thank you, God, both arms straight in the air. You know what? If you ever want to follow me in public, you could totally steal my purse because I'm in there going, thank you, Jesus. And I said, Cliff, that is awesome. God loves you so much. Woo. And I said, all right, talk to me about that knee. And I said, on a scale of one to 10, Cliff, where's the pain in your knee right now? And he said, it's a 15. And I went, oh, okay, Whew, we got this, we got this. <laughs> and I said, can I put my hand right there? Sure. And I said, God, you love Cliff so much. You sent this crazy lady to pray for him in the medicine aisle. All pain go now. Need be completely restored in the name of Jesus. And vitamin lady was listening and Michael was. And I said, Cliff, where's the pain right now? And his eyes went wide. He said, it's about a five. Thank you so much. And I'm like, thank you, God. Both arms straight in the air. I'm like, Cliff, that is so cool. God loves you so much. Do you know him? Have you given your life to Jesus? And he's like, well, yeah. Yes, I have. In fact, my brother and I were praying last night. And I'm like, well, you're going to have a story to tell him. And I said, Cliff, we're not leaving that out of five. And I prayed again. And I said, all oh, that pain go now. And I straightened back up. And I said, Cliff, where's the pain? And he goes, what would you say your name was again? I'm like, it doesn't matter, Cliff, where's the pain? He goes, it's, I, I can't find it, it's gone. I'm like, thank you, Jesus, you're so awesome. Cliff, God loves you so much, and vitamin lady was reading those labels like there's no tomorrow. And I said, Cliff, would you be uncomfortable if we take the brace off? Well, you don't need it anymore. So it was one of those Velcro kind, and so we took it off, and he put it in his cart and he left there a healed man that is convinced of God's love for him and vitamin lady I still pray for her oh God zap her heart <laughs> so I didn't walk down the next aisle I floated down the next aisle I was just shaking and I got to the bakery and the bakery is my favorite department in Publix and the ladies made a terrible mistake as I was picking up my cake they said how are you doing today oh 
because that was the wrong question to ask me. I said, I'm great. Guess what happened right over there? You are not going to believe it. There's this guy named Cliff, and, da, 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 and I told him what happened, and I said, so I am fired up today. Does anybody need prayer? And Courtney didn't just go, I could use some prayer. She burst into tears and started heading around the counter toward me, and I went, <laughs> and Courtney went, <sighs> and I held her. And I prayed over her and reminded her in her ear how much God loves her. And we prayed for her little girl who is very sick. And you know what? That is not natural and that's not normal. Who falls into the arms of a stranger? It was God's love flowing out for me. She could feel it. So then I floated to the checkout line, and it was kind of odd because the bag boys, I could see both of them, and my checkout girl looked severely depressed, and I said, what's going on today? And I started checking out, and I'm like, I'm going to make an attempt to talk to Justin, my bag boy, six foot something, big boy, about 17. And I said, Justin, what would it take to put a smile on your face today, sir? Nothing. Oh. Right? I'm glad I left that girl in the car because two things irritate me, negative behavior and bad customer service. And I think George Jenkins would have been appalled. So I'm like, I'm going to try again. Justin, how about a million bucks? Nope. Now, normally I would have gotten snippy, but I took that girl off. She was in the car. And this girl, the one full of agape, was there. And so I stood next to him and I said, you know, this morning I got up early and I said, God, somebody needs to be reminded of your love today. And Justin didn't just cry. He burst into tears. And I went. And this giant boy landed in my arms, sobbing in front of all the customers, all the employees, the managers, everybody. And I held him, and I reminded him how much God loves him. And I said to the checkout girl, I'm taking him with me. <laughs> and we walked out to the car, and I'm like, Justin, God loves you so much. He sent this crazy old lady to tell you that. And do you know him? Have you given your life to Jesus? And he goes, yes, ma'am. So we put the stuff in the car. I said, Justin, baby, what's going on? He said, on my birthday, my dad was arrested. And yesterday... He stood before the judge and was arraigned. They gave him 25 years. And he fell into my arms again and we cried together. And I said, baby, that, I'm not just going to put a Band-Aid on that. That's big. That's heavy. That's heartbreaking. And I'm so sorry. But God's going to give you the strength. He's going to equip you. He's going to be your father. You're going to be okay. Why else would he have sent me to remind you of that? Just into your line. Because he knows you by name, Justin. And he didn't need a name tag. Five people. Seven if you count the vitamin lady and Michael. That wouldn't have heard about God's love if I wasn't crazy. If I wasn't bold and vulnerable. And any of those encounters could have gone terribly wrong. But I got up that morning and I put it on. And I wrapped myself in it like a Snuggie. And I said, God, I'm your girl. Put me in, coach. Put me in the game. You want to see the greatest example of love ever? Romans 5, 8. But God showed his love to you by the fact that while we were still sinners, while we were still rejecting him, he died for us. Would you just close your eyes for a second and 